1590 WAKR, 17 minutes after 8 o'clock, and time once again to go to film school. Film study professor Joe Fortunato joins us on Friday mornings. And with this week being golf week, why not? We decided to go back 40 plus years ago and look at 1980s sports comedy. Caddyshack, and you talk about a list of stars in it, the cast, interesting plot, and how some people stepped up and kind of stole the show when it really wasn't intended to. But I'm going to let Joe get into the details. Film study professor Joe Fortunato with us this morning. Joe, good morning, my friend, and jump into Caddyshack. Well, good morning, Ray. And this is something we don't often do here on film school and talk a little comedy. Uh, and, and, for my generation, at least, Caddyshack is probably one of the most beloved comedies of all time. In fact, Premier Magazine voted it as one of the 50 greatest comedies of all time. It was ranked number seven on the AFI's list of 10 great sports films. Uh, it was directed by the late, great Harold Ramis. It was co-written by Brian Doyle Murray, who, yes, that is Bill Murray's brother, as well as Harold Ramis and Douglas Kenny. Uh, and it was originally inspired by Brian Doyle Murray's memories working as a caddy in a golf club. He actually pitched the movie as National Lampoon's Animal House on a golf course. Uh, Animal House had just, become, had just come out a couple years earlier and was a great success. Um, originally, the film was going to be more of a simple coming-of-age story about kids working on a golf course, uh, but with the expansion of of the, the comedy roles that you mentioned in the, in the genius casting, uh, that kind of <laughs> that original idea sort of blew up <laughs> and it became a, a free for all comedy farce. When you look at the, the casting of this, certainly the Murrays are in there, but it was interesting. And I thought, Joe, you could talk about the personalities. Chevy Chase, Bill Murray in the movie, rarely seen together because there was some hostility between the two. Yeah, when they worked, uh, well, they, you know, Bill Murray sort of famously replaced Chevy Chase on, on Saturday Night Live. People sometimes forget that. Uh, they weren't on the cast together, but they didn't get along. Uh, and they uh, had a sort of an infamous fight when Chevy Chase came back to host Saturday Night Live. So when these two, uh, you know, by 1980, you know, big stars of comedy got together, there was a lot of concern that they might, you know, ruffle feathers, uh, based on their past feud. And actually, the famous scene where they are, where uh, Chevy Chase hits his golf ball into Carl's, um, or Bill Murray's, uh, sh you know, shanty shack, uh, that wasn't originally in the script. And Harold Ramis said, you know what, we have our two big stars and they don't have a scene together. So they sort of wrote that on the quick. And uh, uh, fortunately, Chevy Chase and Bill Murray got along. Ironically, Ted Knight, who... Uh, by all accounts, is a pretty nice man. He didn't get along with most of his young co-stars, like Chevy Chase and well, Ronnie Dangerfield was younger at the time. He thought they were kind of, uh, you know, unprofessional. <laughs> well, talk a little bit about, again, staying with the casting part and the plot of the movie. Rodney Dangerfield was supposed to just be a part of this movie. He ended up being the big part in my observation. Joe, I thought he stole the movie. It's almost hard to say who stole this movie because so many people yeah, did. Yeah. Uh, everybody has, sort of has their famous or their favorite character, I should say. But all of, uh, you know, Murray, uh, Chase, Dangerfield, all of those roles were originally supposed to be cameo appearances. appearances but because they, they were all so good at improvising, their roles got expanded. And we know in the end, uh, they were all sort of equally stars of the movie. Um, Don Rickles, ironically, was supposed to play the part of Al Cervic that went to uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Mickey Rourke was considered for the role of Danny Noonan, the, the young golfer, but he was turned down because the producers didn't think he was funny enough. Um, so, and, and Bill Murray's character was originally written as a silent character, kind of like a Harpo Marx. But once Bill Murray was cast, uh, obviously they encouraged Murray to, to speak and improvise. In fact, his famous scene uh, where he's the Cinderella boy and he's whacking the, the mums <laughs> with the golf ball. 
uh, that was all improvised. He was only instructed to uh, imagine him announcing his own sports fantasy. And Bill Murray said, here, give me four rows of mums and I'll do the rest. And, and that whole scene was improvised. Joe, they did a lot of filming for the movie down in Florida. What about filming? Often you give us behind-the-scenes looks of complications or interesting stories. Anything on that side with this movie? Well, um, some of the things that, uh, uh, I mean, this being 1980, there was uh, a lot of partying and, and drug use going on um, that, that made a lot of the people uh, show up late for work. Um, the uh, This is <laughs> it's a gross moment, but... Uh, it's kind of still a, a, an interesting production story. If you look uh, in the famous scene in the pool where they discover the baby root in the pool and yes. it causes a panic, <laughs> uh, if you look closely at the wrapper, they actually uh, block out uh, or remove the H. So instead of baby root, it says baby rut, which is a, a kind of a common thing that's done in movies to avoid uh, copyright issues, lawsuits, and things like that. So uh, that's a, a little something to look for. Originally, the assembly of the film by the editor, and this is almost impossible to believe, was four and a half hours long. Oh. Um, and it's now a nice, tight, you know, 90-minute film. Joe, as successful as the original Caddyshack was, they tried to do Caddyshack 2, and it was a gigantic flop. Why was that? Well, it's a bad movie, <laughs> to put it bluntly. I mean, okay. in fact, Caddyshack 2 uh, is kind of infamously one of the, uh, is sort of known as one of the worst sequels uh, of all time, uh, kind of you know going up there with like Jaws 4, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, so it didn't, it didn't age well. Uh, well, it, didn't, it, it never even did, you know, any, it, it didn't uh, uh, compare at all to its original um, one quick story I want to tell about Rodney Dangerfield sort of in production is he was new to films, um, and when he was uh, in his scenes, in his first couple of scenes, uh, Harold Ramis would call action, and nothing would happen. Dangerfield would just stand there, and he, he would say, hey, Rodney, is there a problem? Are you ready? And Rodney would say, yeah, sure. And he goes, okay, action. Again, nothing. Uh, so Ramis walked over to him and says, Rodney, when I call action, that's your cue to come in and do the scene. <laughs> and he says, you mean do my bit? He goes, yeah, do your bit. <laughs> so from then on, whenever Rodney Dangerfield was in a scene, Ramis didn't call action. He just said, okay, Rodney, do your bit. <laughs> there you go. The movie Caddyshack on Film School today with film study professor Joe Fortunato. You'll be able to listen to that back, WAKR.net, in just a couple of minutes, WAKR. Net. Joe, my friend, as always, thanks for the visit. We'll regroup again next Friday, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. See you then. You got it. Joe Fortunato. With